This is part four of a video series created for students studying CFD analysis of a quad capture. This part will help you to understand your simulation. You will also learn how to check if the simulation is converged and how to interpret your results. You can also run your simulation on GPU if you have access on GPU machines. To find the GPU option, you need to go for the enterprise in the capability level, then under the solver option, you have access to GPU solver. Whenever you start your run, the residuals will be plotted in one of the windows. Residuals measure the imbalance of the current numerical solution and must be descending and be small values. Besides of residuals, you have to plot the quantity of interest, which we have covered in the previous part. The plots must be stabilized to consider that your simulations are numerically converged. And then the last but not least, you have to check the overall mass in your model. To find the fluxes, you can go to results, fluxes, double click and that mass flow rate. Then you can find inlet and outlet here. We don't have any inlet, it's gonna be only outlet then compute. The net values should be small and in acceptable range. You have to perform some post-processing and compare them with some verified data if you have them. There are several options for post-processing. One of them is the contour plots. Contour plots are under the results and then here. If you want to create a new contour plot, just double click on contour plot, then you will see this window. First of all, you need to define the variable. For example, velocity and then velocity magnitude. Then you need to define the location. You can choose the surfaces that you already have or you can create new surfaces in your model. To create a new surface, it's just open this one and then choose a plane. Let's say we wanna create a plane at the center of the draw, so create. Then you can scroll down and then find the plane that you have created and save and display. During the counterplot creation, you can also include your mesh. Let's say we want to include the walls of the drone and then display. You can also change the color of the surfaces here. Close and then display again the counterplot. So this counterplot shows the velocity around the drone in a plane that is located at the center of the drone. The other point is to exclude global range. When you have the global range activated, then it's going to show you the mean and max in the entire domain. But for that specific surface plane that you are just visualizing, you can exclude global range and then have the auto range which is showing the mean and max in that specific location. You can also put a name for your contour plot to have a better reference for future. You can have another contour plot for pressure or wall shear stresses on the drone's walls. To find the wall shear stresses, you can go to wall fluxes, then wall shear stress and then location, then save and display. You can also have some velocity vectors. Similar to counter plots, you can put a name and then choose the variables for the vectors, which could be velocity. For the surface, I am going to choose a surface that is going through the propellers to show the rotation, how they are rotating. You can change the style to arrow and then scale down the size of the vectors. The other option for post-processing is creating path lines. For the path line, you can choose rotor walls, then put some number for the path skip, draw mesh, and save and display. So this is showing the flow streamlines around the propellers and how they are rotating or interacting with each other. 
As a part of post-processing, you can also do some computations. So you can go to results and then go to surface integrals. Then you can choose area weighted average of the pressure or like wall shear stresses over the propellers walls. Then compute. The numbers are printed out in the console. You can do similar computation for the forces. You can define the direction of the vector that you want to check the forces. For example, in Z direction, and then choose the wall zones, then print. You can also perform some analysis for the moments. Then for the moments for each one, you have to define the correct moment center and then the correct moment axis. The moment center is the, the axis origin that you define for each rotational zone. You can also perform more post-processing by creating plots, scenes, or even animations. Thanks for watching this video series.